So this is this is 14 inches. I know you said 12, but I just went a little bit that's longer. Perfect. That's perfect. perfect. What about the tip, the profile, the upsweep? Uh, Does it need more? I think it's probably a little, a little bit more like a, like curve. More curve. Okay. Uh -huh. Like this. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So then more kind of like <laughs> up like that. Straight here and then more belly. Yeah, uh -huh. Okay. It, it, right here is perfect. Mm -hmm. It's just a little bit like. A, okay. I don't know. More belly. Okay. Um, it's a little bit. It looks, it looks very little. No, no. You don't have to do it too much. Okay. What about handles? Um, do you have a preference? No. Just make something, something of your best design. I think wood is fine. Wood? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you said it was going to be thin, right? Thin for like. You know, uh, usually I like things nice for chopping vegetables. But okay. this is for me, so you don't have to be too heavy. Okay. Yeah. Not too heavy. I don't like too heavy. Ones. Okay. And like, you see the curve in this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So the belly is all in the front. Okay. I like this. I like the point, but uh, the belly has to be a little more like this. Yeah, okay. Uh, perfect. And the, the, this is the perfect size. I mean, the, the thick. Okay. And and you don't have to put a lot of... You ask me about the, the, the protection for your info? Yeah, so no guard. No guard. Cool. I'm excited. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. How long is it gonna take you? I'm gonna try to get it done in two months. Two months? Yeah. Okay. And then I'll, I'll keep you updated too. Awesome. Keep posting on Facebook too. <laughs> yeah. We're back here at Desert Metalcraft to forge out the blade and no, I don't normally forge out most of my stuff because I'm not really set up for it yet. Regardless, forging doesn't make a better blade. It can make the process more time and material efficient if you're good. It allows for a lot of flexibilities for shaping and it's just fun as hell. This project lends itself well to be forged because of the style of the profile and the large curve in the blade. First thing we do is we forge in the tip. To be good at forging, you have to understand that there's an order of operations and you can't just go in there and start hitting things. You can, but you end up fighting the process the whole time and you might not get the results that you want. A good blacksmith or bladesmith understands how metal moves and can efficiently manipulate it using proper planning, preforms, and efficient strikes to end up with an accurately forged piece. They have skills to conserve metal and time when later going to the grinder. I have none of those skills, and I'm straight up not going to even pretend that I know how to forge well. I've done some of the past when I was first starting out, and I know some basics, but it's not a skill that I'm practiced with yet. This bar stock is probably too wide to forge very easily, and plus with my lack of skills and experience, pretty long process. That's okay though, the, these are the types of projects that are really fun to work on, and that's all I really care about right now. The worst that can happen is I completely fuck up and start over. If I stopped doing anything because I wasn't good at it, I wouldn't be a knife maker. Once I get the tip somewhat to shape, then I can start getting in more of the overall profile. I'm using this fancy power hammer, which is too good for me, but it's definitely saving a lot of time. I'm trying to be careful with it because it moves metal really fast, which means I can mess up really fast. My goal was simple. Don't fuck up the steel, don't injure myself or anyone else, get it close enough to grind the rest of the profile, and just enjoy learning. I think overall it's actually not too bad and I can I can work with what I've forged out. Definitely not perfect, but it's good enough for me to profile the rest on the grinder. This part is pretty simple. Just scribe the lines and then go ham with a slightly worn coarse ceramic belt. The slightly worn part is pretty important because you don't want to waste a brand new belt on profiling. It just rips the abrasive right off. I'm using the edge of the belt a lot because less surface area means faster grinding. The more surface area you have in contact when removing material, the slower it is. Larger surface area means more stability, but less speed. I also don't have to worry about overheating anything because it doesn't matter before heat treatment. Now it's profiled and ready for heat treatment. It's got a thin clay wash on there to prevent a lot of the oxidation that happens at high temperatures. We do three normalization cycles from a high heat, lowering each time. This will relieve the stress from forging and reduce the grain size.
After normalizing, we quench and rapidly cool the steel to transform the microstructure and get it really hard. And then temper it afterwards to reduce it just a notch and increase the toughness. It stays really hard to keep an edge, but it's not super brittle anymore. The quenching is one of the most stressful parts of knife making, and almost always you're going to get a warp and or twist of some kind. Here I'm working out where the warp starts and ends, and the axis for where the twist is. It's pretty bad, but it's nothing we can't fix. The way I fix most big warps is shimming and clamping the blade in the opposite direction of the warps, then put it back in the temper for another hour or so. This usually bends it close enough to grind everything else straight. First step in grinding is to establish my center lines, which will act as the foundation of everything else, and I reference everything to it afterwards. This step can take a long time to get right, especially on such an odd shape, but it's crucial to get as close as I can so that grinding everything afterwards is straightforward. After the center lines are established, then I can go ahead and do the heavy grinding. I get it fairly close to the geometry that I want, and then I sharpen the edge so I know exactly how far to thin it. Since this is a totally new style of blade, I'm making an educated guess on where the final geometry should be, based on what I know of how it's going to be used, and based on big slices that I've made in the past. When it's been ground and closer to finishing, it's ready for the signature. I'm just doing an electro etch with a stencil and a machine that I made years ago. It runs super hot, so I have to do quick dabs, otherwise I'll just burn the shit out of my stencils. Now we're ready to do the final touches on the blade. I'm grinding the tang in the shoulder where it'll meet up to the handle. I use a carbide jig and run it right up to the grinder. The ceramic belt will grind steel, but the carbide is really hard and acts as a physical stop. This lets me just ram it in and then I get a nice crisp shoulder. Like all my other blades, I round the spine of the choil. This is critical. The last part on the grinder for the blade is to go over it with a scotch brite belt and get an even finish. Before we wrap up the blade to do the handle, I sharpen it up. Since this is a pretty beefy slicer, it'll get a fairly coarse edge that'll last longer and provide a good bite to cut through meat. I had three possible handle designs I came up for this one, and I'm going with the original one at the top. The bottom one is just too modern, and the middle one is too normal. I'm going with the top one, but I'm making the butt of the handle a little bit more pointy. The block I'm using will be desert ironwood, and the front bolster piece will be black canvas micarta. I have one center line scribed in the micarta, and I marked two end points. I just drill two points at the ends and connect the dots with a slightly smaller drill bit. For the ironwood block, I marked the profile of the tang, and then I drilled two holes to match those angles. I go back in with one larger, longer drill bit to get the depth. Doing it this way saves me time on broaching out the hole, and later it'll be completely filled and solid with epoxy anyways. For the fit up, I quickly go through with a square file and I just go back and forth between checking on the blade and then taking off spots that rub. I'm not going for super tight, but it should be snug enough and not have any noticeable gaps. I fit up the ironwood block with a super ghetto brooch that we made. It it looks horrible, but it works. Mostly. When everything is fit up pretty well, it's time to glue the pieces together, but not completely to the blade. I wipe Vaseline on the tang so that it doesn't stick but the micarta and ironwood pieces will be glued together so that I can shape them as one single piece. The handle itself is pretty minimal, with just a few curves to complement the profile of the design. For me, flat surfaces and straight lines are way easier. 
Curves are doable, they just need a little bit of touching up to do afterwards. I make sure to have everything squared off and then I draw the center lines down the handle. Shaping the rest is pretty easy. I think you're starting to get the picture. Center lines first, then shape the rest. I do these handles in sections, the front and then the back. It's easier for me to isolate the parts and to make things comfortable, and also to be clean and symmetrical. Most of the shaping is done on the grinder, and then I get the faces cleaned up on the disc sander and then glue the handle permanently. After it's all glued up, it's time to finish everything. The last steps on this knife are to sand the handle and apply final oil coats. Sanding is pretty self-explanatory. Just get it to a higher grit and make sure it's pretty uniform. The curved sections need a bit of refinement since that was done really roughly on the grinder. I just take some more coarse sandpaper and get out the low and the high spots. Finally, it's time for me to rub oil on my wood. I use true oil and apply super thin coats, letting it dry completely between each coat. Now, the knife is all done. I had a lot of fun and I kind of want to keep this thing for myself, but I have to deliver it to my friend.